Alright, so what I'm what I'm gonna show you guys is how I'm gonna fill this part in right here. So as you can see, this you know got this whole side done. I went, you know, there's still some more smoothing and you know bringing out dark shadows on this side. But what I'm gonna do is just basically take you through the basics of how I how I basically start the shadow. You know, all, like all the shading and the shadows. So for this, I use a soft brush. This one's like real soft. And then I'll use um, some of this graphite powder. It's basically what the pencil is. It's basically the lead, the lead of the pencil ground up into, you know, a fine powder pretty much. So now you gotta be careful with this actually because if you dip too much on this, it'll basically, you know, it'll saturate it with a whole bunch of lead and making it you know, probably more darker than you want it to be. So you you know probably test it out first or something. But basically, what I'll do is that you know I'll get my brush and start applying some of this. So now I'll start with like probably one of the darkest shadows, which is up here, and I'll just start brushing this in. You know, I'll start doing my shading. Where I suppose it should go very lightly and slowly. See, I'm, I'll use the same graphite that was dipped onto the paper so I don't get it too dark. You know, you'll see a lot of people just spread a, a bunch of graphite onto the actual picture. I find like that doesn't really work for me. I don't work, have, I don't use um, powder graphite heavy, heavily like that. So I like to do it gradually. You know, just get my layers on there. My layers are shading on there. Work that out. See, as you can see, I don't know if it's picking that up, but I'm putting like a bunch of, you know, let's put the the dark shading of the forearm in there. Get that in there first. So there's that one. And then there's another shadow that's gonna come, a dark shadow that will come right here. So I'll put in the dark shadows first, right? The dark shading first. Like, I'll indicate them first. And then I'll fill in the lighter ones last. First I'll go with the um, the dark ones. At least to indicate where they're at, where everything goes, you know? Everything else will fill in on its own. See, look, right there, I went too dark right there. I didn't wanna go that dark on that spot. But whatever, we can always fix things up. So I'll just basically fill this in the way I think it should go. That's some pretty dark shading and stuff. Hopefully I'm doing it right. Some up here. I mean, I'm not the quickest worker i mean i've seen people do some crazy portraits pretty fast i don't i don't i do it my pace you know i'm not really worried if i take too long that's why my art may come out different from someone else's you know my technique includes you know time and that's the way i do my things is the way it'll you perceive it through my drawings so i don't really be bent over about if I'm doing it fast or slow, I'm doing it the way I feel I need to do it. So that's how I do my art. And I encourage a lot of you out there to take your time with your stuff too, you know. But yeah, as you can see, I'm like basically real careful about where I'm distributing this, this lead, you know, this little saturated picture. So I'm really careful about what I'm doing with this. Although this came out pretty dark right here. But if that's the case, you know, you could always clean clean things out. So for instance, if that's bothering me too much, I have this thing here called a chamois. Like, it's basically like this cloth. I don't know what it's made out of, but it's basically like the cloth you clean water up with. It picks up, picks up water and shit like that. So I basically use that. But I could actually pick up some of this lead here 
if it's too dark. You see, I'll actually lighten that up like that. So these things pretty much help. I do it very lightly. I don't want to rub the very lightly pick brush off the darks the dark parts. I don't want too much. I don't want to rub it into the paper too much because then it starts to get a little permanent that way. And then, you know, go back on it with the same brush to blend, to blend all in the, to blend the patches of shading all in. One thing I can't stand is patchy shading. My shading got to be smooth. I don't know how y'all feel about that, but shading definitely got to be smooth. And if the shape and the form of the dark shadow, like, you know, the, the, the shapes, the shadows that make the shape of each muscle, if they're not in the right place, don't worry about it too much. This is just the basic. I eventually go over it with a darker pencil to um, to steer, you know, where the lead goes a little bit more better to, t to make sharper um, shapes and shadows. I usually do that with the pencil, so I wouldn't worry too much, you know. So look, with that, I got that part done pretty much. Um, I think that's good enough, right? It's, that's pretty good. Let's just even that out a bit, blend that in. So I'm blending this stuff in as well. I mean, like pretty much locking all the shading in so that it doesn't, so that if it is dark in certain areas and lighter is gradually locking in. Like I said, I'll, I'll fix all of that, make it a bit more perfect in the fi more final stages. Um, how did I do this? This is coming like this. This is coming here. So this is this is actually real dark over here too. Let me get some more left for this part. This is a dark area right here. It's a pretty dark area. Nah, but I don't have to use um. I don't really have to use the graphite for this part. I want this area to be dark, but I don't want to use a bunch of graph loose graphite on here. I'd rather make that darker with the pencil. It's basically the bigger spots and the more prominent dictations you want to like, the prominent indications you want to make, I would, I would suggest using this, you know? Sometimes I even throw it in there with the pencil. It's like there very lightly, but I figured I could do this without indications, so. Basically blend all this stuff in this. There's a shadow here. This is basically light shadow so I could fill in whatever's left on the whatever lead is left on the brush I'll just fill this lighter part in and I'll fill that in know that there's something there then and then sometimes too what I like to do is indicate where the shadows go with a light H pencil I'll indicate the crevices and where like the cracks and the, the cuts of the muscles where, where they're actually gonna go so I don't make too many mistakes boom I know there's gonna be a muscle right here so I'll Sharpen this up. This should probably come around this much. I'm hoping. So there's a. I mean, you may not be able to see it on the camera because I got a bootleg tri tripod here. I just taped the fucking phone right to the lamp. <laughs> taped it right to the adjustable lamp. So I don't know if I'm getting the angle yet. I don't know if I can see this, but I'm basically indicating with his cuts go where his muscles from his arms are going um, so there's a bandage here there's a big dip here there's gonna be a big dip here connecting to this muscle somehow like this boom okay so I would just say gonna be a shadow here somehow boom right up in here there'll be a shadow see and it's, it's cool to sketch it out like before you go buck wild and start adding graphite with um powder graphite I would actually advise going in with a pencil to indicate where a lot of these shadows go I mean, very lightly. You don't gotta like sketch it in like a maniac. Just like very lightly, so you know what's going where and what's what. Cause sometimes shit can get confusing. So, so boom. So I know we got that. 
that's there. There's gonna be a dark shadow going on here. Right about here. So that'll be like that. Uh, so I'm basically putting in indications. Indicating where everything goes so I could actually get to shade it and be comfortable with where I'm going with the shading. Um, I don't know, but I'm just gonna say that this is also dark too. This is like the hardest part to me in drawing, indicating where everything goes, like using your eye, looking at this section, looking at that section, you know, eyeballing it, seeing if it looks like it's in the right place. With muscles, you don't really have to do too much of that because muscles are muscles. You don't really have to do that with shit like water and things like, you know, certain things. But if it was like the placement of people's eyes and mouths and things like that, that shit, that has to be on point. Just, you can't really play around with that because a person has to look like a person. You know, that's like something definite. The face, the face is definite, you know. So you gotta make sure you get those right. But things like muscles, you can pretty much flip it and flex it. It doesn't have to be 100% perfect as long as it's not so much out of place where the muscles look, you know, dislocated or like, you know what I mean? You gotta pretty much make sense. So boom, so now I know he got this piece of his forearm. This is here. Boom. This, there's a, there's a cut, another cut that he has. I'm gonna say, I'm gonna say it's like right here. I'm gonna say this muscle's right here. It cuts deep right here. So it's gonna be like darker shading and then some more lighter shading as it comes down. I'm gonna say it, it curves. It actually comes down here a little bit and then kind of curves this way, going to the middle of this round shape right here so that's a sh shadow right there a prominent shadow right there let's indicate that real fast I mean this part is really going back and forth with the graphite and making indications with your pencil pretty much that's what that's what we're doing to get to all this how I did all of this I basically did what I'm doing here you know, indicating this shit as I go along and the best way is to indicate if you're doing, like, trying to find out the distance between things, it's good to ha to sketch things out so you could, like, you know, like, I drew this, right? That way I know this cut comes down, but where does it stop? Oh, it stops in the middle of this. So whatever you drew previously or whatever you indicated previously, you could use those as measuring points or, like, checkpoints to, you know, start eyeballing something else. If, I don't know if that makes sense, but... It's good to like, how do you say, leave these little checkpoints here before you go on doing the next steps to your drawing. I mean, it takes time, it takes patience, you know. That's the only way the sign's gonna come out if you go through the, the steps and have the patience to go through the steps. This is, I mean, it's discouraging even for me. Like, when I'm at the beginning of the drawing, I'm like, oh shit, I don't wanna do this. I just wanna get to the. I just want these layers to, these layers of shading to pop up. For me, it gets, it, drawing actually gets fun when I get to like the actual, all the layers have been set down and I come tweak it up and make things darker and lighter. I love that part. Well, it's this beginning part that I hate, man. That's why I take too long on the drawings. I imagine I take longer than I should because I enjoy putting the shadow in on something that's already shaded. You know, I feel like I got this thing where I feel like I can make it look more realistic than it than, than it's already looking. Like, there's always work to be done. Like, I always have a problem never really knowing I want to leave it alone and move on. <laughs> but um, if you notice, my style is a little bit um different than a lot of the hyper-realistic styles you see out there because I started doing hyper-realism um, no one was really doing it. It wasn't really posted on Instagram like that. I was like one of the first wave 
of people that started doing hyper realistic drawings you know there wasn't really there weren't that many tutorials and things like that so I had to pretty much figure out how to do this on my own so what you're seeing here is similar to probably stars of you see, that you've seen but this is how I do mine this is how I do my hyper realism in this manner and there's a lot of different hyper hyper realistic tutorials out there and there's a lot of like people who have this style but if you'll notice I mean I don't know if, if, if you choose to notice you'll see that my style is a bit different than product like and like product wise and product it looks more like a drawing but it looks hyper realistic um there's a bit more cuts you know animation or like how do you say it's a bit more comic style in my hyper realism i don't know if you choose to see it or if you can see it or not but we got to separate the lights from the darks and the outlines it's really based on a cartoony kind of concept but i incorporate it with how i do my thing all right so i mean i think i got that full on right i want to say i did There's a shadow here. I mean, it's the boring part, you know, but it is what it is. Got to get through it. Um, I feel like this could be more dark. Turn it up a little bit more. This could come here. This could come out like this. Shadows are important too because they actually bring out the you know the features the actual features of of whatever you're drawing you could basically see it come together when you start putting in all the shadows shadows are, you can't really be messing up on the shadows and the placement of the shadows you mess that up in the slightest bit your drawing may not look like the person you're trying to draw may not look like the person you're drawing due to where you place the shadows and how you, the width and the how, you know, how you place the shadows. So, keep that giant in mind. Uh, so, I mean, I don't know if you could see what I'm doing. You probably can't, but I'm just putting in a lot of, you know, little indications, basically, like, on how I'm going to shade this. See, maybe you can see it a little better there, what I'm doing. All that's going in there. So, I mean, I guess I could play with that a little bit. So, I'll start whatever, with whatever graphite I have on this paper very lightly. I'll just make these darker. Even though it's like an oxymoron right there. But I'll just do exactly that. Just so that I know what I'm working at, working with, you know. And then as I'm going over it, over it, going over and over this, um, everything will fill in. Like the layers are coming on their own. Like it's a process. This is like a step process, you know. The layers will start building up and adding up, creating all these other values. So this is basically what that looks like getting it all getting these indications in there real quick and I mean it's not that bright in this room but I tend to draw in darkness I mean for some reason I you know after a while I have to put the lights on it but I feel like natural light with a bit of shadow, you know what I mean, with a bit of shadow in the room helps me pick out um, things a little bit better. Like I can see my inconsistencies a, a little bit better with some, with a, a nice amount of light and a nice right amount of like darkness altogether in the room. up a bit. 
I don't go heavy on the um on the graphite powder. As you can see, there's some videos. I'm surprised on how how heavy people are um, starting with the graphite. I'm like, yeah, that's crazy. Some people just you know they stay comfortable with it. They just know how the right amount to put on. I never really could put the right amount on, so I just build up gradually. Anyway, but my I enjoy drawing more when I could um gradually build up the levels of um, shading that I have manually rather than have to keep, you know, to me, I say like, I mean, I, don't, I won't say it's cheating because it's difficult in its own way, but graphite powder is like the easy way to cover ground when it comes to shading. I would say graphite powder is particularly like for, for larger drawings, you can get, you could cover a lot of um, space easily using graphite powder. But it gets a little bit too difficult to deal with when you see, because I don't do my drawings. Like if you see the face of this is the size of my hand, you know, a lot of hyper realistic, hyper realistic drawings, people do an eyeball the size of my hand, you know, and that's another thing, you know, I do a lot of my pictures. Um, I won't say real big or real small. I do it enough to where, you know, enough to where you don't need a whole bunch of graphite powder for the picture. And enough to where you don't need to do so many pencil fillings that you're making yourself crazy. So it's like a fine balance on how I how I do all that. And it looks like a lot of this is just darkness right here. This is just straight black. It's like all black right here. So I'll just this is gonna be all shadowed up, shaded up. But there's gonna be some blackness. But at least I got this much. So now from what with this, at least now that I have this, these indications, oh, let me do this bottom one, bottom one down here. And this goes down like that. There's a elbow kind of coming up here. And then this is dark. So this right here is gonna be dark as well. This is probably the darkest shadow on this arm right, on this section right here. It's gonna be close to black actually at some point. So we'll just fill that in. See, so now at least I know what I'm working with at this point. Now I know that I got these shadows and crevices to work with. Um, this is curving like this. I don't worry too much about getting the shadows, unless it was on his face. I don't worry about it too much looking the, you know, the exact same way. I can always fix that, that up later, like I said. You know, there's a sharp cut in that shadow right there. See, so I pretty much got the forearm down, as, as you can see. Somewhat, I got this forearm down, laid out. Like, laid out enough so that I can see what it is I'm gonna do. like a little lens flare hitting right there but as you can see I, I put in a few indications of how this form is gonna go and then there's like another lighter shadow going on here but like I said these which what, what you're seeing these indications that you're seeing right now these are the darkest parts of the picture of this part of the picture these are gonna be the darkest shadows I didn't fill in any of the lighter sh shadows because those will come in after a while. So there's a thing that I do, right? As I'm putting shadows in and I, so I kind of like blend them in like this. I'll go, I'll spend a nice time just doing this. Just by doing this, I'm doing two things. What I'm doing is I'm basically blending in the patches on the shadow that I indicate, the, the graphite that I indicated the shadows to be, I'm blending all the patches in. So it's actually getting smoother than the outsides of the shadow where the straight brush strokes go. It's kind of like I'm getting away of, I'm getting rid of any, how do you say, hard lines. Because you don't really want hard actual lines when you're doing shading. Sometimes you do have them, but in this case, no. So what I want to do is just rub this across like this, brush this across like this, just to do those two things. Lock in, lock in certain shadings 
and then also get rid of the, the definite lines that are on the outside of each stroke of shaving. And then at the same time, filling in some type, some type of um, value of light gray. Like the, what, the leftover that's on the brush and the, the lead that I'm also brushing this with, it's gonna actually be, apply, actually be applied into the, the lighter areas. Because his forearm is in no way straight white. It's gonna be a lighter gray. So the lighter gray is, I don't really even draw them in to tell you the truth. I just kind of let them build up at first, define the, um, define the darker shadows, and then it kind of takes care of itself. Unless I'm putting textures in. Boom, so that's how I fill that in. Now if there was, if there were any straight white highlights, like lines that were straight white highlights, I would go back in with an eraser and just erase it sharp and you know, that white won't be the whitest. The paper, to be honest, is not actually white. It's kind of like an off-white. Um, you'd actually be able to get some type of, like, um, realization that, oh, that's that's white because it's the whitest, it's the lightest shade on any other shade here. You see what I'm saying? So you'll get that effect of it being light, an actual 100% light, you know what I mean? But, yeah, just this this process over and over and over again right here what I'm doing right here this is the same process I used throughout the whole picture as you can tell you can see it gets a lot sharper this arm still has to be worked on there are the aspects of this arm of this shading that don't look realistic so I have to actually work on that a little bit but just to move on to show you guys um, how I at least get to this point this is what I do. It's real simple. Like, and to tell you the truth, this is, you know, basically concludes that example, that step, that actual step. This is like the finishing. So what we did basically was, we basically indicated where each muscle cut of the muscle is gonna be. <clears throat> we did it with um, graphite powder, and then we did to play it safe. I showed you how to, you know do it a bit safer with the actual pencil indicating where these cuts go and then you know the next video I should actually this would act this this actually right here would be a lit a lot um a lot but a bit more filled in at least that way I could show you where to go from then from this to where it's gonna be actually getting like to this